Um, keys to the success of it, obviously, are reps. We talked about reps, a lot of reps, um, the spacing. So, so you have to understand, um, you know, the spacing of where they got to line up on the field. And I'll talk about that. But we give those mechanical graph papers out, and those players need to line up where they're supposed to line up. And they have to understand the spacing of the field and how we're displacing the defense across the field. Because if we don't, we don't end up getting those isolations that we want. And you have to know your quarterbacks. Guys say, well, I mean, you have to have a quarterback, first of all, that can throw a little bit to run this. If you don't have a kid that can throw, you know, obviously this isn't going to be your your deal. This is going to be what you want to do. But if you have a quarterback that can throw the ball at least a little bit, to me, the outside choice is a boundary route. Okay. So, so you know, we've had years where we've done nothing but throw this outside choice into the boundary. And then in, in comparison, we would throw the slot choice to the field. Okay. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and if that's, if you have your average quarterback, I think that's something that any quarterback really can, can comprehend, I think, and have, have some success with it. Um, you know, and I'm going to go through all these reads really in detail, but you know, the outside receivers rules, first of all, is alignment. Um, we ask him to find the nearest safety pre-snap. So we find the deepest safety. And if he, we're, we're not really even concerned with him. And you'll see that when I talk about alignment, unless he's outside the hash pre-snap. Okay. That that's probably the biggest thing. And, and how this play is run is the release is a speed release. So it's like, we're running a track meet. Like we want to get to 10 yards as fast as we can. We don't want wiggle. We don't want a lot of deal with the stem. Okay. Now I'll talk about what we do if it's press, but, but we want to go like, we're not trying to trying to influence anything with the stem. We're sprinting to 10 yards and then we're, we're making that decision. Okay. So again, it's, it's that fastest release. All right. We're going to make the decision in 10 yards of what we're doing with the route. And in the read is really simple. We give the kid basically it's you can touch the corner when you get to 10 run by him. All right. If you can't touch them, you're going to stop the route and bring it back down on the stem. And I'm going to talk about the route in, in really detail uh, here in a minute for our quarterback in the gun. OK, it's a, it's a basically a three step concept in the gun. One big, two little. All right. And again, the routes are for the quarterback. The progression is, is obviously the choice. And then what we call an Occupy route. But ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time, the ball is going to come out to the choice route. OK. And, and when we start to, just so you understand, when we start to talk about this and we start to talk about um, the, the displacement on the field in alignment, this is the reasons for it, okay? So we're running our choice route here, and we have the stop read is what we end up getting. But this is a drop 18, all right? I mean, you can see they're, they're literally dropping eight. They're zone. They're dropping eight into coverage. But no one is able to, to get to this choice it's a, it's it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one and we're into the boundary and so it's not a crazy throw all right and, and we're able to to really kind of isolate that so you know that's something that really when we get talk about alignment like i'm talking about now it's really 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 important so you know the base alignment so so and again these can adjust with your quarterback's arm but if it's to the field we want him to line up basically on the top of the numbers okay so if the ball you know is in here and we're going to the field that that's where we, we're talking about anything other than that we have a boundary alignment which we are at the at the widest five yards from the sideline okay you know we even get sneak it to four um we we want to really get get you know, get close to that sideline. Now, if you've got a quarterback that's got a big time arm, then you can use that boundary alignment. Um, you know, you know, even if you're into the middle of the field or the, 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 you know, the hash. Again, what we're looking at on this concept, okay? So, so we're running our choice, okay? Obviously, this is this is going to be the read. This is going to be the outside read. I'll talk about this occupy route in a minute. But the only thing we're concerned with is the starred defender, really. OK, so that's the guy we're choosing that that that's the guy we're trying to isolate and read. We're trying to basically pick and occupy the, the, the triangle and the square defender or excuse me, the triangle and the circle defender with what we call this. We call it an occupy route. OK, 
Um, you know, and for us, what that is, is we're trying to get a forced outside release. All right. And, we're, and then what we do is we run to get covered here. So, you know, we don't necessarily tell the kids that they're not getting the ball on this, but they can kind of kind of figure it out. And, and what we tell them is, all right, if, if there is a safety in the middle of the field, you know, on the hash, you know, or, or in the middle of the field. So if there's a safety, a free safety in the middle of the field, we're actually going to post him. Like we're, we're going to run basically right at him, you know, to try to try to occupy him. If he's on the hash, we're going to snap it off in front of him. And then we'll work. If there is a hole, we'll sit in there for a potential throw to the quarterback. Uh, if we feel it's man, we'll stay on the move and just keep, you know, just keep trying to carry both of these guys. Um, what we do on the backside, and again, this is, you don't have to do this. You can run a route on the backside. I've seen guys run, you know, shake routes. I've seen guys run go routes. I've seen guys run hitches, you know, whatever you want. We call it a hangout route. And basically we're a small school. Our guys are playing, playing both ways. We're playing with extreme tempo. I've already talked about how this route is not going to be in the progression. It's not even in the deal. I mean, this ball is coming out. Okay, over here, um, we just have them walk off the ball or stand there or whatever. So when you see our cut ups and you see a backside guy, it looks like he's being really lazy, not coming off the ball. He is being really lazy, but it's taught like that, and we want him to do that. And and the reason is he saves his legs. It's like we're giving a guy a play off because we might go run choice with him on the next play, you know, and then he's going to take the play off. All right, so. Um, you know, and we have things built in off it. We, we can tag quick game on the backside, depending on the game plan. We can, we can, we run a, like, a um, um, a walk off and go, you know, so we'll kind of just, just hang out and then, you know, we'll pump him and send him up the field. If these guys, cause sometimes what these guys do, they'll try to take like cheap shots at him. You know, the guy will be there. You'll see him walk off and he'll come up and try to jam him or whatever. And then if we see that we've run like a little pump and go and stuff like that off it over the years, but, you know, really, we're only, we're only interested in these, these guys on the, on the front side here that, that I talked about. Okay. Cause again, the landmark, we're getting to 10 yards. So that's, that's that decision point. Okay. That that's where we're going to go ahead and make that decision, whether we're going to come back down that stem or, or we're, we're going to go ahead and run vertical with it. Okay. Now we talked about releases with a hard corner. Okay. And this is where you really have to stress that decision point, you know, it, it is still the 10 yards. So you want to be careful. Like you don't get this press bail technique, right? So you have a guy, you know, they're playing press quarters where, where he's, he's showing press and then he's getting out of there. I mean, he's getting out of there in the quarters. Well, that's still probably when we get to the 10 yard landmark, that's going to be a, be a stop read. Okay. Don't think just because he's up pre-snap that it's automatically going to be a be a vertical because that deal is not going to work out for you. It's going to cloud the read for the quarterback. We want the easiest release. Okay. So, so if it's, if he's up press and he's truly up press, if we have to take the outside fine. If we have to take the inside fine, but you'll see on both of these, what ends up happening, we want to stack the corner. So once we beat the corner, we spend a lot of time on really working to get even and to get stacked. And, and I'm going to tell you the reason why. Okay. Maybe you're different than me, but in the majority of my coaching career, my receivers, if, if him and him were going to run a race, so my kid in that corner are running a race, that corner is going to beat him every single time. If they're going to run a race from here, my corner, the, the corner is going to beat him every time. So my point is the reason we stack is we want the corner to have to come through our receiver to make a play on the deep ball. Because we feel if, if we go ahead and beat him and we don't stack him, so say we just run, you know, vertical there, we think this kid has a really good chance to undercut that ball or to catch up and make a play. Same thing there. He beats him there and he stays outside. Okay, I, I feel really good that that kid's probably going to be, be able to run faster, you know, and he's going to be able to make a play on the ball. But by stacking him, when you see the cutups, our receiver almost leans into him Okay, and almost makes it very, very difficult for that guy to be able to make a play. Um, you know, the, the coaching point on the stop route, okay, we get to the 10-yard decision. We want to try to come right back down the stem, okay? You know, and, and when we do that, all right, the only way that, that that really doesn't happen, 
okay, is is if we have to adjust that that curl, which uh, I'm going to talk about as well because we do drill that. And again, there's the outside release, the inside release with that vertical option with the stacking. Okay, so we really we really really stress that stack, you know, element, um, you know, to the release. Okay, 